Hello guys, I'm back working on the John Deere 9560R again today and basically today I'm going to try and tackle the complete mess of wires that I have uh, throughout the model. I'm going to start by finishing the LEDs on the rear of the model. I'm going to put the brake lights and the indicators uh, on these um, little plastic pieces, the same as I've done on the front here. And that should be all the wires in the back finished. Then I'm going to move through to the front and try and sort out the wiring uh, it's been so long since I've done this I can't really remember what way I've wired the things up the front here so I'll have to figure that out as I go so to start with I'm gonna have to drill a few holes through these two little plates here and I'm gonna add in these three millimetre LEDs uh, only because I have three millimetre LEDs on the front so I'm just gonna keep it all the same I probably should have done it with 1.8mm LEDs really but um, I guess I didn't have them back then so I'm going to just finish the whole model off the same with, uh, with the same LEDs, keep it consistent throughout so I'll just drill a few holes in these plates put these wires through and uh, wire them up I'll have to give them all a common ground and I think there's resistors for the indicators already in the front of the model so I just need to run the wires to the front for the indicators and I'll put an indicator or I'll put a resistor for the brake lights um, maybe in the back here and just run the wire up to the front all the wires that will come together with this and I'll have to drill another hole in there I guess and that should keep it all together ok I've drilled the holes and mounted the LEDs here I need to sort out the wires but that's roughly where they're gonna go you can see I just put them over where the painted uh, lights were on the model um, I think they should be okay there I'm, I'm just gonna leave these parts the way they are I'm no real interest in adding any more uh, indicators and brake lights but I, I think it should be I think they should look okay up there um, the ones on the front look alright so there's no reason why these shouldn't be the same so now I need to uh, connect the grounds, give them a common ground and uh, wire the rest of the wires up and run them along this pole here so it should be pretty straightforward so the next thing I need to do is drill the hole in the body and run the wires through and start wiring everything else up the first thing I'm going to do is mount this battery in here along with a little power switch so I'm going to have to drill a hole for the power switch in here mount that there I have a wire here from the rear of the model, which is the, the the power port for the trailer at the back there. I'm going to connect that to the positive of the battery, then connect those both those wires to one side of this switch. That way, when you switch the tractor off, all you have to do to charge the battery that I'm going to mount permanently inside the John Deere here is to hook up to the rear socket and charge through the rear socket of the tractor and that's the same way that the John Deere 8360 RT model works so the first thing I need to do is to drill the hole for this switch which means dismantling the tractor all over again well here's the model part again it's quite the mess of wires here but uh, I need to drill the hole for this little thing here but while I have it apart I think I'll get rid of this little thing here I don't know what, what it was maybe it was something to do with the plastic engine that used to be in here but I'll get rid of that and that might let the battery down a little bit lower which might be useful in the long run well I cut away that little piece for to let the battery in there but uh, some of you are probably screaming at the screen that it's uh, it's actually the hole for part of the screw uh, it is tapped down quite a bit down there but uh, I could probably show you with this um, I don't think it will cause too much trouble in the end really so you can see there I got uh, one of the longer screws screwed it up through it so that's obviously why the little uh, bump was there on the thing but I don't think it's actually really needed um, there's a good bit of threads on this so I'll just get a shorter screw and I think that should work out better for us so the next thing I need to do is drill and tap the hole for the M2 bolt that's going to hold this power switch in place ok so here's the little hole now that's been uh, tapped as well so we should be able to screw this switch in place now so that'll be in there like that just 
flick it on and off and the battery will be mounted just there so far so good so now I'll put the model back together and we'll have to start wiring it up I've realized I need to add a transistor on the front here for these uh, larger LEDs uh, that's obviously a problem with um, leaving a build for so long you kind of forget what way you've left it but uh, that'll have to be sorted out there um, but before I put the model back together I was thinking I'll mount this uh, motor driver on the back of the motor here because there seems to be a good bit of space between the rear of the motor and the servo so I think I'll just mount this here and put the few wires control wires from this up to the Arduino that might make things a little bit simpler you can probably hear the 3D printer in the background so sorry for that noise but uh, what I'm working on now is the lights in the cab here or in the bonnet and what I've decided to do is instead of having them individually controlled I'm going to have the green lights come on with the headlights all at one that means I can put one transistor in the bonnet here and then I'll only need the one wire going to the microcontroller rather than needing two transistors two wires and all of that so just going to connect them all but here's what's going to happen basically headlights and the green lights are going to come on all at once so I just need to put a transistor in there that will switch that for me oh the current it's taken nearly 100 milliamps to light that now so 96 milliamps it's in there so that's uh, that's why we need the transistor okay so here's our transistor circuit now to uh, to light our LEDs so we have our wire that's going to go to our Arduino we have a 1k resistor to limit the current there that goes to the base pin of our transistor which is this pin here the pin on this side then is the emitter so that has to go to the ground on our battery the collector pin then in the middle that has to go to the ground of the LEDs and the positive of the LEDs is connected to the battery so the power goes through the LED positive out the negative leg of the LEDs then this wire to the collector of the transistor and when you switch the transistor that then goes out the emitter pin and back to the battery so that's how that circuit works very simple and when we power that up we have three milliamps so let me just try and wire that up now three point two milliamps is what we're drawing there so now I just need to wire that into the tractor okay guys I've been at this for quite a long time today and what I've done I've put the motor driver on the motor I connected it directly to it got rid of the wires from the motor and connected the motor driver directly to it I've connected all the grounds and all the positives uh, through that board and brought only two wires out the front here and I've added the transistor and the resistors that are going to light these LEDs and I've connected those to the head or to the lights in the cab so all six of those LEDs are controlled from this transistor that's hidden in here I also done the transistor in the bonnet for the headlights and those green lights that look down so that's that done too uh, all the grounds are connected and I'm left with uh, this uh, nice little mess of wires that we'll have to get connected to an Arduino so I think that's all I'm gonna do today if uh, you liked that video make sure and hit the like button and any comments or suggestions I'd be happy to hear them either in the forum or below the video I'd say one more video will finish this off I just need to uh, figure out the wires for the Arduino I decided to try and use only one Arduino I, I reckon I can put the radio module up against this kind of little grill thing and uh, the signal will be sent out through the front of the model and obviously reflect off everything and get to the receiver that way uh, that's what I think I'll be able to do so this will be the first model I've tried with only one Arduino so we'll have to see if that's going to work or not and that's probably going to be the same way I'll do the conversions of the CQ Control 32 tractors it's uh, going to be one Arduino in those so that's all I'm going to have today I might uh, I might try to do a bit more on this tomorrow and you'll see the next video in a couple of weeks of me finishing this off. So, thanks very much for watching.